In chapter six, we're gonna be focusing on systems of equations. Today, we're gonna to talk about um, being able to identify solutions to a system and also being able to solve a system. And we're gonna solve by graphing. So your learning target is right here. Um, add in by graphing because that's the method that we are gonna focus on for today. I'm gonna to let you guys do the warm up on your own and we're gonna get into the notes. So what is a linear system? A linear system is a set of two or more linear equations. Remember that we've talked about this. Linear equations are equations that can be written in the form of y equals mx plus b. We've been focusing on that form because that's the slope-intercept form. You could also write them in the form of ax plus by equals c. Um, that was the standard form, but we don't use that a whole bunch in this um, chapter. So a linear equation has typically an x and a y, right? The exponent on x is only 1, um, and you can write it in slope-intercept form. So if you can write it in slope-intercept form, then you have a linear equation. If you put two of them or three of them together, and we're talking about this whole grouping now, this is a system. So where can a linear system be used in the real world? One example I can give you was, let's say you were comparing gyms. You wanted to join a gym and there are two near your house. Maybe one gym has an uh, initiation fee of $50. You have to pay $50 just to join, and then maybe you pay $25 per month. This first equation right here, this one, could represent that gym. So let's say that's Club Julian, um, that's a gym by my house, and they have a $50 startup fee just to join, and then you pay $25 per month. There's another gym near my house, uh, let's say LA Fitness, and LA Fitness has a $100 fee to join, and then their monthly fee is only $20 per month. In that case, each one of these equations would represent a gym. The first one would represent Club Julian, and the second one would represent LA Fitness. And I would use these equations if I wanted to know, um, you know, for how many months like, which gym should I join if I was joining the gym for a whole year, for 12 months? Would that be the better gym to, to use if I was joining for two years? Would it be the better gym if I was joining for two months? Um, you can see that when you look at these equations, really, this Club Julian is going to be cheaper in the beginning, right? Because it has a smaller initiation fee. But the longer you've been paying $25 per month, eventually Club Julian will become more expensive than LA Fitness. So this system could be used to figure out which gym would be the smarter decision for you based on how long you were joining, okay? So I want you to come up with another example of a linear system. You can almost just write a word problem that this system could represent using those same numbers, but not gyms. So think about it. If you were comparing phone companies, if you were comparing um, plumbers, I mean, really, it's anything that you would want to compare to different services or businesses, a system would be helpful. So you can write your example down there, and then we'll move on. So how can you tell if an ordered pair is a solution then? It's really simple, guys. Think about what this ordered pair represents. This ordered pair is x and y. So all you have to do is plug those in. If the x and the y work in both equations, then it is a solution. All right, so let me take this equation, x plus 2y equals 6. That's one of the equations from the system. And x minus y equals 3. That's the other equation. In order to see if 4, 1 is a solution, all you have to do is plug in x and y in both equations, and it must work in both. So let's do this. 4 is x and 1 is y. So I'm going to put in 4 for x plus 2. I'm going to put in 1 for y. Just substituting in those values. And then I'm actually checking this. This should equal 6. All right. We'll multiply first. 2 times 1 is 2. And we can see that 4 plus 2 is definitely going to give me 6. So if it works out at the end that you have 6 equals 6 or 5 equals 5 or 3 equals 3, that ordered pair worked in that equation. Remember, it must work in both, so let's check it in the second one. Make sure you put 4 in for x and 1 in for y, and we're checking to see if this works. 4 minus 1 is 3. 
this is a true statement, 3 does equal 3. So I would say yes, 4, 1 is a solution. So I want you to try the next two. Plug in your ordered pairs into the systems. Check to see if they work. Um, and if they work in both, it is a solution. If it only works in one of them, but the other one doesn't work, it's not a solution. Or if it doesn't work in either one, it's not a solution. So try the next two examples and then press play on the video to go over them. Okay, so hopefully you've tried the next two. Here's example two and three. When I did two, x and y worked in both equations, so this is a solution. Check your work. If you didn't get that, guys, check the negatives, okay? Maybe you multiplied this incorrectly. Uh, but that's typically where we make our mistakes. In example three, though, two negative one worked in my first equation. When I put that in, I was able to get four equals four, and that works. However, when I put it in the second equation, two times three is six, 6 minus 1 would only would give me 5. 5 does not equal 6. This statement does not make sense. So because it did not work in one of the equations, it is not a solution. Some of your homework problems will be just like this, where you're just finding, is it a solution? If you wanted to find the solution, though, so they didn't give you an ordered pair and you wanted to find the solution, you're going to go through these four steps. So we're going to talk about graphing today. This is not the only method you will use, but this is our first method that we will learn. You want to, anytime you're graphing, you want to rearrange each equation into slope-intercept form first. So make sure that you can graph it easily. Then graph both of the equations on the same coordinate plane, and I would plot many points, okay, until they intersect. Don't just do two or three. I would plot a lot. And then where the two lines intersect, that's where your solution is. You're going to be able to check your solution by doing what we just did and plugging the point back in. Okay, so let's try number four. Step number one was make sure it's in slope-intercept form. These are both in slope-intercept form. Step number two, then, we're going to graph. So I'm going to graph my first equation. I'm going to label it y sub 1 so I can label it on my graph, just a little subscript. I'm going to graph this using slope-intercept form. My slope is 2, and my y-intercept is 5. So remember, I go up to my y-intercept first. I plot that point at 5 because of this one right here. And then I move with my slope of 2, so I'm going to go up 2 over 1. Remember, 2 is a fraction. It's just up 2 over 1. Um, remember that up 2 over 1 would be the same as down 2 back 1. So plot a lot of points and then draw a very straight line, use a ruler for this, and I would extend that line all the way off your grid. Make sure it goes from end to end. So this is my first equation. I'm gonna label that y sub one. So I'm just putting a subscript so I know which line is which, and by labeling that over here, I have a nice little key. For the second equation, I'm gonna change my color. That's the nice thing about iPads and computers. We can make it so that the colors are different, which makes it stand out. And I'm going to label that y sub 2, and I'm going to graph that in blue. So again, make sure it's in slope-intercept form. y equals mx plus b, so it is in slope-intercept form. Start with the b, so our b is 2 or positive 2, so I'm going to go up to the y-intercept of 2 and plot a point. And then I'm going to move with my slope of a negative sign. Now remember, that slope is negative 1 or negative 1 over 1, right? So I'm going down 1, forward 1, down 1, forward 1, down 1, forward 1. That's the same as going up 1, back 1, up 1, back 1, because these two would be equivalent. So if you go up 1 and then negative 1, you're still extending your line. Use a ruler, extend that line all the way off the grid. So the best way to do it so that you can clearly see where your lines intersect. The intersection, where these lines intersect, is your solution. So right here, we can very clearly see that our solution is negative 1, 3. So I'm going to label that negative 1, 3. 
And I'm going to box that in because that's my answer, guys. That's your solution. So you graph it, and then where the two lines intersect is the solution to the system. This is the ordered pair that if you plug it in, like we did at the beginning of this lesson, you will see that it works in both equations. So how do I check it? Plug it in. Okay, you can always plug the point in back to the original problem. Label that point of intersection, circle it, because that is your solution. That's what we're looking for. Now, is graphing the best method? Well, graphing is a little challenging because if the ordered pair is not integers, you might have a hard time identifying the solution. Let's say your lines intersected and they intersected, you know, in the middle of a square. They didn't intersect right on the grid lines. We would have a very hard time figuring out exactly what that solution is. So we're only going to start with this method. We're not going to um, use this method for long because it's not great, but I need you to know how to do it. Try number five, pause the video, and then press play to go over it. Okay, so hopefully you've tried number five. Number five, first step, make sure it's in slope-intercept form. Both of these are in slope-intercept form. Second step, graph using this the y-intercept first, and then move with the slope. When I did this, my solution was negative two, three. Check your graphing if you did not get that. Also, remember I told you you could plug it in. I showed the check step here. It does work in both equations. Okay, so let's try this word problem. Zach and Dom are reading the same book. Zach is on page 14 and reads two pages every night. Dom is on page 6 and reads three pages every night. After how many nights will they Will they have read the same number of pages, and how many pages will that be? Set up your system and think about what your equation is representing. So we're going to have Zach, and Zach is starting on page 14, and he's reading two pages every night. So my equation would be y equals 14 plus 2x. Dom is on page 6, and he's reading three pages every night. So in this system, x is representing the number of nights, and y is representing the total number of pages. I'm going to pause the video to set up my graph, and then I'll start recording again. I want you to try it as well, uh, because I'm running out of time, though I'm going to do that on a pause. Okay, so I set up my graph just due to time um, without you on the video, but I want to explain it. I defined my variables right here, and I also rewrote these in slope-intercept form. Now, you kind of have to guess with the numbering, and this is why graphing is not my favorite method, um, but I could see that both of these slopes are increasing, and this one's going to start at 14 and then can increase. So I figured I'll count by twos so I could at least get up to 30, and that might not be enough room. So if it ends up not being enough room, I'll have to redo it. Um, for the number of nights, I only counted by one, so I counted by twos here and one here. You could absolutely do this differently, but this is the way I've chosen to do it. And because of that, you need to be very careful when you're counting your slopes. So let's graph the first one. This one's starting at 14, and now it's going up 2 over 1. Now watch, look at your numbers. So I'm going up 1, 2. That's 14, 15, 16. So that's 15, 16. That's 2 over 1. Because I counted by 1s here, I'm going a whole block. This slope up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. Now, I know when you look just at the blocks, it doesn't look like you're actually moving by a slope of 2, right? That's because I counted by 2s. You're allowed to do this, but you do need to be very careful. Also, I chose to only graph this in quadrant 1. Why? Because this is a real-world situation. It's not going to make sense to have a negative number of pages or a negative um, number of nights. So I'm not going to continue my line over into the negative quadrants. Graphing the second line, starting at 6, I go up 3 over 1. So I actually have to go up in the middle of the box. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3 over 1. So you can see that I am increasing. And you have to, again, be very careful about graphing this. And we can see our intersection is going to be right there on the edge. It's going to be 8 nights and 30 pages. So I'm running out of time. I'm going to get cut off here, but I wanted to make sure we say that. We can see the intersection is at 8 nights and 30 pages. So how many pages will that be? 30. 
How many nights? Eight. 